mm -hmm. with the food mm -hmm. banks and the food agencies at I mean, that's where the kids find themselves, and that's where you can reach the parents and the kids at the same time. And it's very, very efficient. They also did a survey while we were at that meeting to see what were the top three wishes that each one of the organizations that works with uh, food distribution or food tenders uh, in, in um, the three top wishes to become more effective in the way they do their work. Of course, number one, not hard to guess, sustainability, <laughs> that was the number one. More volunteers to be able to, you know, uh, distribute the food around. And uh, the third one was um, better promotion mm -hmm. of, of what's available to them. So it was, it's a, a monthly meeting, it happens every month in, uh, in, uh, in the North County. And I was able to contribute my two cents there because I had not heard of anything of this nature in the real Northeast County, which is Julian. And hey, it wasn't anything, so they were going to look into it, and now I think I got the latest information that they're actually doing something with the school district in Julian Port. Interesting, yes, yeah. yeah. so That was like a really great meeting. <coughs> they definitely do a lot of that here in San Diego, in the San Diego Central area, mm -hmm. and working with the schools, and um, especially with the Unified School District, and bringing kind of like farm foods to the school so that kids have the freshest, the healthiest mm -hmm. foods available to them. So it's good to know that that's happening in the North County as well. And I, I love this whole thing about, you know, really focusing on healthful food. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, there's a big push for that, and That's everyone's on board. This is a little off that subject. I was going to tell you, though, you've seen GIS systems in, work in, in action before. You know, out there, what Luis Almeida has out there in the um, in Imperial County, where the map is, where he's talking about where the different sites are, where there's, like, agricultural burning or field burning right. and that kind of stuff. That's a GIS system. And I've, I, that's the so Ivan, the it. Ivan, yeah, yeah, that's true. So it's, that's you've seen it in action. It's just, you know, you can use it in so many different ways. It's a great mapping tool. And it's a great opportunity to kind of see things in real time. And right? this one this one was uh, uh, developed by uh, college students at the Palomar, so it was for free. And it was totally relevant just for this particular use. Yeah, that was great. Using GIS is definitely a great way to kind of get up to date, really, um, um, you know, cutting edge kind of information. Absolutely. Um, so we're going to move from hunger, which is re really important, and we're going to move into talking about ending homelessness. Um, you know, we could talk about ending hunger. We're going to talk about ending homelessness, and I'm going to welcome our very special guest, Michael McConnell. I work have the opportunity to work with Michael, who is a small business owner here in San Diego County. Um, with our effort to, um, with the funders together to end homelessness, San Diego chapter. Michael is a huge supporter of all of the efforts that are going on around ending homelessness in San Diego County. And he's really involved in this one project that's new to our county um, called the 25 Cities Project. And so I'd like to welcome Michael and have him tell us a little bit about, you know, what is this 25 Cities thing, Michael? Well, thanks for having me on. I'm just finishing up a, a tweet here. I love social media and, and using it to... Uh, to work on educating a people about ending homelessness, so this plays right in very nicely. So I just wanted to let people know what was going on here. Did you send the tweet to me? Uh, I I sent it to, to Alliance Healthcare. I included you, of course. We got to get the word out. That's right. We know y'all are working hard on. We, yeah, we know so y'all are working hard on a lot. Yeah, the delay is a little bit here. So um, just to give you a little rundown about 25 cities, is it's a national initiative. It's about building a coordinated entry system in 25 cities across the community that have the largest population of homelessness. And it's really about using our existing resources in a much more efficient and effective way. So what, what is a coordinated entry system? What does that mean? Well, have you think of a an Airbnb system where it's matching you up with uh, uh, where you want to stay across the country and that's similar to what a coordinated entry system is. It's, it's about matching up people experiencing homelessness to the best intervention possible that will help them solve their homelessness quicker, quicker and more efficiently. And I know that there was a meeting that happened recently um, where a bunch of people got together. What was the point of that meeting? Well, that was to form a design team and to educate a design team and have them come up with a plan to build and implement a coordinated entry system 
for our community and specifically targeted for downtown San Diego for the first 100 days as a pilot. And there have been a, some other efforts to do this. How is that all going to, like, how do you see this really being effective in the long run? Well, it's, think about, we have about 10,000 people that use our temporary housing system every year. So if you can just improve the efficiency of our system by 5% and, and improve the outcomes by 5% of those people by using a more coordinated system, that's an extra 500 people that could exit permanent housing every year. That's pretty impressive. I mean, I think it will be really exciting to get this underway. What are the first steps? What do you see? What is, what's the first thing that people will really be able to see happening in the downtown area? Well, and initially it really is about getting to know people by name and knowing what their needs are, building a registry of people to start feeding your system so that you can then match up those folks with the most appropriate intervention. So in the beginning, you don't necessarily see uh, a lot of change on the streets per se, but internally you start seeing a whole different way of doing business. You know, you know um, I know that there are some goals that this group has set. What are the two primary areas that they're going to be looking at and trying to assess, and, and what are the goals they're trying to reach? Well, it's, it, the initial push for this campaign is to end chronic and veteran homelessness. And during the 100 days, they've set a goal of housing, permanently housing 150 veterans and 100 folks who are experiencing chronic homelessness. And that, that will actually So that be is a substantial. Yeah. So that's going to be really significant for the downtown area. I mean, I think to watch people in our community begin to make this progress of identifying, actually being able to talk to people as if they're human beings, which they are, of course, who are homeless in the downtown area, and then being able to connect with them and say, here's how we can help you solve your homelessness, and, and begin to make those efforts. Yeah, that really is a lot of what it's about. It's about forming a, a system that's very client-centered, and, and finding out what people need to solve their homelessness. We give people a lot of things to manage their homelessness, whether it's a shelter bed, food, a tent, a tarp, but what people need is housing. Housing is the only solution to homelessness, and the quicker you can provide that, the, the quicker you can make uh, huge strides in your community to solving homelessness. That's so true. Sylvia, Michael and I are really involved in the homelessness issue. Do you have a question for Michael that, you know, because this is really new to you? that you're hearing it for the first time? Well, I, you know, every time we have a meeting or every time we attend one of these uh, community functions, usually keep us pretty uh, uh, abreast on, on what's going on. And, and, I, and actually, I, I have met Michael also in several of the uh, meetings that I have attended in San Diego. And I think, you know, it's, it's just great in all of the things that we're hearing about uh, the issue about homelessness and how Europe, everyone, the, the organizations are approaching it to end homelessness uh, permanently. So mm -hmm. it's great work and uh, no, I don't think I have any hey, Michael. questions at this point. Hey Michael, how do people out there that are watching this, how do they keep up to speed and up to date on what's happening with the 25 Cities Project? Well, we do have a, um, a Facebook and a Twitter page specifically for the 25 Cities uh, Project uh, initiative, pilot, you know, we call it a lot of different things. Um, the, it's called 25 Cities San Diego, and that's both the, the Facebook page and the Twitter. So if you search 25 Cities San Diego, uh, you should be able to find us. And then, of course, I do social media all the time under Homelessness News San Diego, Homelessness News SD. And then you can link to those sites from my pages also. So if it's that's homelessness... Great. So, yeah, you'll be able to find me. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, Michael is a real asset to our community and all of the work that he's doing and the leadership role that he's taking. And we really appreciate you in our community and also for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. Y'all take care. Yeah, enjoy your yeah. conference. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. That's always, that's really interesting stuff that's going on in our community. You know, and, and so we move from hunger and homelessness to, like, 
how do we strengthen families in our community? I know you've been involved with some of that. Yes, that's a very interesting group of uh, community members that you know come together to uh, work on quality of standards to uh, ensure that they have the framework that they can share with the parents on mm -hmm. how to navigate the challenges of being a parent. You know, from uh, you know walking away when you're having a very stressful situation to asking for help. Um, all of the other issues is about transportation, um, the um, early Head Start programs, all of those things that resources can be available, but when you look at the parents' uh, challenges on how to access those resources, it doesn't help much that they're available. So there's been some uh, community dialogues uh, that are being put together by the San Diego Strengthening Families Network, uh, and uh, the um, Human and Health Services are, is involved, the uh, Child Welfare Services are involved, and other organizations. And what they do, in, and this is very timely, uh, in, in the use of uh, the libraries as a focal point for people to meet, which, you know, you had one of those meetings yesterday relevant to, mm -hmm. to uh, homeless services as well at a library, and I think it's uh, other organizations are really utilizing them for a lot more than, than you know, just uh, what they were initially meant for. And it does uh, provide a much more accessible forum for everyone since people go to the libraries already and they're there. You have really nice meeting rooms and there's some really good um, partnerships built with uh, between libraries and, and, and other organizations. But one of the, one of the things that uh, the uh, San Diego Family uh, um, Strengthening uh, Network has uh, come up with are four, five bullet points in um, Providing this kind of our resources to the to their families, and these are a it's called the strengthening families prevention framework protective factors, parental resilience, social connections, knowledge of parenting and child development, concrete support in times of need, and uh, social and emotional competence of children. So they have these as basics. Uh, the community dialogues will hopefully enhance that, mm -hmm. and this is all going to be research-based information that are probably going to be bridging the gaps of what's already existing, and then they're going to have, in Ju on July 15th, after they're done with all the community dialogues, they're going to uh, share all the findings uh, of all of these community dialogues in the six regions of San Diego with um, all of the parties involved. So it's a, it's a really great collaboration, and I think um, probably one of the things that they're most proud of and that we as San Diego's are most proud of, that they develop, developed a quality um, standard and they were adopted by the national uh, organization. So, Is there a place they can get in touch with somebody to uh, yes. find out about this dialogue? The next, the next meeting is going to be on June 30th, and it will be held at the Mira Mesa uh, Library Community Room. It'll be an event from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30. And, you know, we hope that uh, organizations can participate and, you know, share with them what their uh, concerns are, share with them what their successes are, and hopefully build even a stronger foundation to be able to assist those families. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like you children. can find out more about it all, the number four, kids.org. Just That's check right. check out that and see, um, get information about the community dialogue and if you can't make this meeting certainly you can make the next one maybe yes. get it on your calendar and as we <clears throat> now we've, we've ended we've talked about the hunger of the homeless and, and families and now it's talking about ourselves and and how how what is it what's the greatest news about San Diego these days with regard to fitness well I think I we should be very proud not only of San Diego but of California as a whole uh, four of uh, metropolitan areas in California ranked as a, the ten fittest in a, a study that was that was done uh, is Sacramento, San Jose, San Francisco, and us in San Diego. All right. And it had uh, some really good uh, uh, indicators, which were the uh, we preventative health behaviors. It was based on that preventative health behaviors, <laughs> chronic disease rates, community resources for physical activity, and other factors. So, you know, we hear all this campaign about Live Well San Diego, we're about advancing health and wellness, and it's always great news to know that, you know, we are making progress and that we are... Uh, well, you know, the new fashion trend is, is some sort of a wearable device that's monitoring how much you're moving, how much you're sleeping, whether you're sleeping well, how many hours, 
you know, I, mine tells me like if I've had restless sleep, and it'll actually tell me how many minutes in the night I was restless in my sleep. So, uh, you know, is that what you want, Kevin? You're laughing. That is the fashion trend. Is that, is that what you? Is that, is that what it is? A bit flex. Yeah. Did you get that? Online. What do you think? <laughs> You need to share that stuff. I mean, I don't go I'm doing these shopping very often. Like, I figured you notice all my fashion trends. Oh my god! Right? <laughs> that, that, that flex. They've got the one that also clips on. Some people like that better. Oh, you know, interesting. But, oh, but um, nice. it really, I was at the Chicago Blues Festival this weekend, and I was jumping up and down and clapping and you know dancing and going really crazy. My Fitbit was going off. It was like buzzing me yeah, and everything right. while I was dancing like crazy. And it even called me an overachiever on my phone because I really went over the 10,000 steps because I was dancing like a fool. Anyway, I really coming back to, to our you, show. No, I really want to talk to you about that after this. we got a show to do. <laughs> okay. we got to finish the show. Okay. So wanted to do an innovation update. Our innovation initiative, we've selected five proposals to go forward. Um, the first round of uh, working with our consultant has happened. And Really happy to see that everybody's still going forward. There's always that possibility that they won't, but you know, so far the consultants impressed um, that there's something there, and we'll continue on. Again, July the 18th is the big day. That's when they'll do their presentations, and we'll know that afternoon who got the million dollars, if anybody got the million dollars, right? So it's exciting. And then our sadness. We are saying goodbye to our CFO. He's been here since I started, since you started. started. Um, and Arthur Roque, who has been with us for about four years now, um, has had an amazing opportunity to go to a startup. This Degum technology stuff, anyway. He's going to another organization to be their CFO, and I'm really happy for him. It's something that he's really passionate about. Again, has a lot to do with these fashion trends about being fit. Um, and it, it, you know, it really speaks to him, and I'm really happy for him. But we'll be saying goodbye to Arthur at the end of the month. We're Are you playing like movie. sad music? Do we have like <laughs> sad faces? Violins. He yeah, will be violins. missed. He will he definitely will be, missed. be missed. So don't forget, everybody. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, um, connect with us on LinkedIn. I'm being told I have some Twitter questions on here. Hey, you guys, y'all. <laughs> Nancy and Sylvia seem to do a lot with a lot of groups. What is the difference between their jobs? What do you do? <laughs> wow, can we do a whole program next time? Oh, really? <laughs> we run out of time. Well, we can do a whole program on that. We're, we're, we do a lot of the same because I we are all out. Both of us are back out in the community and meeting with groups and. We try to, because there are only two of us and there's a lot going on in San Diego County and Imperial County, we try to split that up. Sylvia spends a lot of time out in Imperial County more than I do, but I get out there as well. Um, we kind of split up the work. She takes on a lot of the mission support grantees, and I work more with the innovation initiative grantees. So we split up those kinds of things. Um, and then some of the administrative in-house kinds of stuff we split up as well. But, you know. and. Uh, support other community engagements, you know, whichever, you know, sometimes they um, overlap and you take some and I take some on the same day, same time. And yeah, we really have to develop that partnership so yeah. people don't necessarily see the difference in what we're doing and that's a good thing. <laughs> Great. There's one more? There's one more? I don't have one more. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't have one more yet. How do you stay on top of what's going on in San Diego and Imperial counties? Oh, how do you? Are you psychic? <laughs> how do you stay on top of things that are going on in San Diego and Imperial counties? There's a, a rumor out there that we're potentially psychic. Are you psychic? <laughs> yes, I guess so. You know, all I have to do is um, find out who's got the latest, and then you know, I'll just communicate with them. That's what my psychic abilities are, just good I communication. <laughs> I do this. Wish I had and my GIS on my, <laughs> on my smartphone tells me what's going on in San Diego and Imperial County. I wish I had a crystal ball, but unfortunately not. <clears throat> yeah, no, we, you know what? We're just out there in the community. We have our eyes and ears open listening to people and finding out what's going on and really encouraging everybody to like us on Facebook. 
to follow us on Twitter, to connect on LinkedIn, and tell us what's going on. That's how we get to know, and we will share it out there with everybody else. And we would appreciate the information. It would well, be very helpful. Share and re retweet. I can't say that word. Retweet. Anyway. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're really happy that you're here with us at Alliance Healthcare Foundation. We look forward to seeing you again next month. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>